Hi Rebels, it's Kai and I talk about career strategies that help you living a more fulfilled life. But there is a problem. If you want to align your career with your life, then at some stage, earlier or later, you will have to quit a job. And why is that a problem? Thank you for asking. Quitting a job, even a job that you hate, can be really hard. There will always be voices in your head. I would love to change my job, but I won't earn enough. I would love to change my job, but I can't move right now. I'd love to change my job, but I have no clue what I want to do. At the same time, you hear about the great resignation. There isn't a week that goes by without another video on that topic. Do those people know something that you don't? So in this video, we look at the three real reasons that keep you from quitting your job. We look at strategies that you can deploy in order to cope with that. And we do that by diving into the world of a famous book. We look at how to have difficult conversations and we even look at relationship advice all in the pursuit of this one thing that you can pursue a career that you really want. Interestingly, we can recognize those fears also in the muscle of pyramid of needs. See, at the very bottom of the pyramid, you have the basic needs like food, shelter and water. So in other words, security. And you will have come across this in the form of finances. I love to quit, but the money is too good. I won't earn as much. I'm already here five years, so I'm more secure in this job. It feels like a trap, right? It feels like you will be stuck here forever. But all jobs are temporary. One way or another, you will leave this job. So rather start the work now that at least you can leave on your own terms. In 1961, American writer Joseph Heller published Catch-22. The work centers on Captain John Josarian, an American bombardier stationed on a Mediterranean island during World War II. It chronicles his desperate attempts to stay alive. Josarian interprets the entire war as a personal attack and becomes convinced that the military is deliberately trying to send him to his death. He therefore spends much of the book creating ever more inventive ways of escaping his missions. The catch in Catch-22 involves a mysterious Army Air Force regulation. It asserts that a man is considered insane if he willingly continues to fly dangerous missions. But if he makes the necessary formal request to be relieved of the mission, the very act of making that request proves that he's sane and therefore is ineligible to be relieved. We ourselves come up with ever more inventive ways of keeping things as they are. It's called resistance, a universal force with just one sole mission to keep things as they are. So what are some practical steps that we can take? Hey, down here. What? You, you're just giving everything away. Just tell them that 90% of the viewers actually Listen, not subscribe keep a to click on this video because Tell they them. want information. Can I just get on with things, please? Just saying, just saying, okay. <sighs> subscribe. Where were we? Practical steps, resistance. Yes, part of this resistance is that you don't want to think about things, especially not our fears. We keep our fears as this mysterious thing that we can use as an excuse not to change anything. But in many cases, those things are not even true. So, step number one, list all your fears. All the things that have to do with your finances, the things that you are worried about. Step number two, think. Think carefully, because many of these things may not be true. So, you came up with the fear that you can't afford a second car. Well, this new job allows you to work from home. You won't need a second car. But there is something that is even more dangerous, which is your mindset. We very easily think, well, if I go to this new job, I can't afford X, Y, and Z anymore. You could also think, if I really enjoy what I'm doing in the future, I wonder how much more money I could earn. Third step, resolve. Not as you think. I'm not asking you to write down all the ways how you can avoid that fear. I ask you to think about 
what happens if you don't take action, if you don't face your fears. Jordan Peterson describes that as the force of chasing you rather than you running away from it. Ironically, the very fact of thinking about the result of taking no action makes you also more inventive to coming up with solutions to those fears. The second fear that prevents you from quitting your job goes towards the stages of the muscle of pyramid that have to do with love and belonging. And it is our fear of not catering to the needs of the people around us, especially the people who we love. It looks like this. I can't possibly switch jobs. All our friends are here. I can't move cities. My kids go to school here. I can't take this offer. My wife would never move away. Some of these are valid arguments, but again, it's worth checking how much truth is in there and how much are your personal assumptions. Have you even asked your spouse or your kids? And then there is this. You want to be the best friend, partner or parent. But you can only be that if your needs are met as much as you meet the needs of others. So before you run off and tell your loved one that you are moving to Madeira and they just have to live with it, consider what's in it for them. They have the exact same fears as you about finances and relationships and, oh yeah, we'll come to the third, so hang on. But it is far easier to solve these questions for somebody else rather than just yourself. You have a very different and more open mindset. So what would you recommend to your spouse or your kids in that same situation? Likelihood, chances are that you come up with a life that suits all of you. Psst. Psst. You want me to tell them to like the video, right? No. Then what? I want you to tell them to like the video only if they get value. Right, moving on. Practical steps on this one. Chances are that when you cater to the needs of those around you, there will be some difficult conversations to be had. For that, it's useful to remind ourselves of some key principles. First one is around time and place. Choose a time when no one is tired, that seems obvious, and also a place where there are no distractions. Then don't lecture but brainstorm solutions. And when it comes to solutions, one of the most difficult parts is actually defining the problem. So define the problem and stay on topic. And finally, talk about the things that you want, not about the things that you don't want. Third fear that holds you back is at the top of the Maslow pyramid of needs, self-actualization. I'm good at what I do right now, I'm not sure if I can hack this new job or the new career. I have great expertise. I can't start all over again. The only way to ever be fulfilled is to do something fulfilling. Here we steal from relationship advice because it's very distinct when you are fulfilled or not fulfilled in a relationship. And one of the key signs is that you feel resentment. Are you resenting your job. What's also very important is that we need to feel challenged. And if you are not, the likelihood is that it is no longer fulfilling for you. And then it goes into downstream effects. You start to find ways to escape from your job. You start to find ways how you want to spend less and less time on it. But what this fear of telling you you can't be fulfilled elsewhere, it's too risky to that really tells you is that if you go for a change, there is no way back. And frankly, that isn't true. Even for jobs that have a high level of motor skills that is involved, if you want to go back, you can easily do that after even six to 12 months and often longer. And don't forget our little rephrase trick either. Maybe you will say, I can't imagine what will happen when I'm truly fulfilled in my job. I would accumulate so much more knowledge. I would feel so much happier. Hey, look, you have to think about your finances, relationships, or personal desires for your life. What you may not have noticed is that your brain doesn't try to solve the problem for you. Your brain wants you to stay in the same place. And that feels safe, but long-term, it's the far riskier option. So don't fall for that. 
not until you've critically questioned the things that we talked about today. And if you want to talk about your personal situation, then you can use the link that's in the description box below. I will speak to you then and see you in the next video. Take care.